Barbara Grork from the Center for Community Arts, Cape May, New Jersey, and I'm here putting the WCFA spotlight on to Stan Spurlack, and he's the owner of the Spurlack Gallery and Sculpture Garden out there on uh, 521 uh, Route 47, which is Delcy Drive, Goshen, New Jersey, which is apparently a section of Cape May Courthouse. Both addresses show up. There's a nice aerial shot on your website of your property. Uh, tell us about that. Tell us, tell us what you have. It, it looks like interesting curly Q paths and things and a big barn. Yeah. Well, I'm sitting in the barn right now and uh, it's in the middle of what I call my Versailles. It's my, uh, you know, uh, rendition of the gardens at Versailles. And the reason is, is a past landscape designer, contractor, retired. I had equipment and I had a big hay field here and it was my getaway farm. So I started by just carving lines in the field with my mower. That's for the fun would, of it, hey? Yeah, we would walk on them. We would ride bikes on them. We would ride motor bikes on them. But eventually, they became the pathways to all the, uh, the sculptures. And eventually, it started to get a little bit more formal looking, but it's in the middle of a wild hay field. You have events out there. So uh, over the summer, for example, I uh, know you had music at the barn. and. Uh, and in October, this coming October, you're doing something called Words at the Barn. And what you have plans for all kinds of arts events. Um, tell us about that aspect. Well, uh, first I wanted to give credit on that photo, the aerial photo, that's Ted Kingston. He flies over in his airplane and he shoots pictures of a lot of really wonderful things in Cape May County, but he shot some shots of my farm and uh, he gave them to me. So I'm really happy to have them. Uh, the farm, the barn has always been a sanctuary, a kind of art uh, paradise, if you want to say that, or a, a getaway where people would come here and take my workshops. Uh, long before I built the barn, we just, well, I would teach painting workshops here and people would come here, but eventually we knew we needed something that would protect people from the wind and the rain and the cold and be able to have guests and do such. So the barn that was built to be somewhat of a barn for um, uh, grape growing operation and other things, uh, vegetables that were growing here, slowly, slowly metamorphosized into being more of a studio. And as far as the events that are coming up here, like you're saying, well, we did the big recording last winter called Songs from the Barn. And, uh, you know, you guys have featured that on, on your other shows. And Songs from the Barn got me to thinking that we could create a series of events here, like words from the farm, from the barn which is about poetry and prose and a little bit of drama. We're going to have drama from the barn. We're going to do a play here uh, next year. We're gonna do film from the barn here next February. We'll, we'll be showing the movie that was just out last night, the documentary called The Artists of Goshen and uh, another fashion film by David McCarty. So we're gonna keep having different events here. We're gonna just change that one word each time where it's gonna be songs, music, concert, film, dance, whatever it is, and there'll be very intimate um, arrangements here. We don't really hold that many people in the barn and it's a private property. So we like to keep things very special. And, and do you have school kids out there or anything yet? Or is that something in the future? Yeah, yeah they, they, they found this, the Girl Scouts especially, they've come out uh, two or three different uh, troops nice. of Girl Scouts. And uh, we hope that some of the schools will decide that they can uh, fit into their programming, the idea of uh, you know, an art class, a nature class, or some group that just needs to get out of the classroom, uh, you know, environment and come hike here. And we were really blessed two summers ago to have two sets of at-risk students come here. And uh, for at-risk students who, you know, have had all kinds of life experiences that make them just a little bit on the edge of, of you know, the way that people perceive to be the right way, which I guess as an artist, I don't know if there is a right way, but... <laughs> The end of the day was they came here very apprehensive, these, these young people, eight or nine of them each time. And once they got here, they felt very safe within the barn and the space and the art and all the tools for creativity. And once we took our hikes around the property, all they wanted to do was create their own art. And so there are a few places on the farm where I set up that people can rearrange stones. They can rearrange uh, fabric on top of a large sculpture. There's these giant silver balls that they can rearrange. <clears throat> so it gives visitors, uh, you know, especially groups of visitors, a chance to do some uh, collaborative work. 
Nice. It sounds like a, an interactive, fun place. Tell us about the nature aspect. The website uh, has a segment inviting bird watchers, butterfly watchers, or mothers, as you say. <laughs> Tell us about the nature aspect. The mothers is kind of neat because it almost looks like it says mothers <laughs> when you read the <laughs> website. But uh, I have a, a couple friends, and one is a young man who who does that thing where they put up a sheet at night in front of a light, and then the moths come and land on the sheet, and you can observe the moths really, really well, and it's kind of interesting. So uh, I've had that here. We've had, uh, uh, you know, people, I, I saw a post on one of the websites that said, are the monarchs back in uh, K May? Well, they better be because they've been here for the last eight weeks. You know, the monarchs are, are a full drive right now. Right. And we had another entomologist kind of person who was a butterfly specialist. And as he walked through the farm, he said, in three minutes, I counted 14 species of butterflies. Uh, this was a similar time to today as it was last year. Right. So we've, we've kept the field so natural, except for the pads, that, you know, there's goldenrod, there's joe pieweed, there's milkweed, there's asters, there's erigeron, there's all kinds of plants just in all their glory. And uh, yeah, the bugs have a festival on it. Do you ever have astronomy at the barn? You know, uh, it, it's ongoing in a way because my son, Michael, who's a professional photographer, has done a lot of uh, astrophotography himself. And uh, so Michael broadcast, live broadcast the transit of uh, Mercury across the sun's face from the barn about three years ago with his friend, Chris Bakley. Reminds Chris me Bakley of a, an old poem. <laughs> yeah, Chris Bakley has gone on to become uh, an ambassador for NASA. Uh, he... he you know, is a, a cheerleading aspect where he gets people really involved in the spaceship launches and the, uh, uh, you know, the SpaceX launches. And so he and I have talked about maybe next year is pulling off a few events here at night uh, because what he's telling me is some of the towns don't want to have people on the beaches at that time of the night because right. they're, they have their laws. But here, because it's a private property, we can get away with it. Nice. And the, sky, the skies are endless here, Barbara. We have, uh, you know, we're in the northwest corner of, of Kami County, and I like to tease people, you know, the next landmass over is southern Canada. So we're, uh, we're pretty far out of the reach of Kami County, and it's, it's very dark out here. And they consider the Pine Barrens to be the darkest area of New Jersey and one of the darkest areas of the East Coast. And Goshen, in theory, is uh, the southern fringe of the Pine Barrens. It's not as dark as the middle of the Pine Barrens, but you're certainly away from Avalon, Stone Harbor, Cape May, uh, Wildwood, where there's all those lights. So you do get a good shot of the Milky Way. Nice. So it sounds like uh, things are developing and you'll just try what seems good. And it seems like uh, you got a, a number of a list of things you've already done and a lot of things coming up. Tell us about the words at the barn then specifically coming up. I have a soft spot in my heart for uh, the written word. Uh, as a young man, I, I was a poet at 15 or 16 years old in my mind. I was really doing a lot of writing and then I needed to find a use for that writing. So I, I developed it into maybe they should be songs. So I learned how to play guitar and I married them together. <laughs> but my career as a musician, you know, really didn't take off. It just was kind of a, a hobby. But I really, really enjoy great poetry. I really enjoy uh, the spoken word in short doses. So what, what I decided to do is on the heels of this big concert, this rock concert we had here, uh, not, not, not with a big band, but it was very, very, very powerful music by Johnny Miller. What I thought would be a, a fabulous thing was we just really change it up to something very different. So I talked to several of my friends who are poets and writers, and I got them to just to agree that they would do this. I mean, it's sometimes a little hard to get poets to agree to read in public, even writers, whatever. The, they, they love writing, but having to perform it is different. So you get the two kinds, gonna, don't you? <laughs> so we're going to have five poets scattered around the farm in certain locations uh, by the marsh, in the forest, not too far from the barn, so that when people come here to visit for the event, uh, they'll be able to walk around and sit with the poets and hear haiku, children's stories, uh, we've got Ken Thompson and Paige Cunningham, uh, Wendy Kaplan, Bonnie Collins. Uh, they're all going to be outside uh, Katie Place. So once six o'clock rolls around, everybody's going to be uh, herded into the barn. 
And that's where it becomes more of a dramatic thing where the lights are turned down low. There'll be an opening presentation. Uh, it'll be a silent presentation. You'll be thinking there should be words to it. And it's almost going to be frustrating that the person's not saying anything. <laughs> and there'll be a, there'll be a, a one, one small, everything's like 10 minutes so that it's very palatable for people to uh, listen to. There'll be a guitar player. There'll be uh, somebody reading really great uh, poignant essays. There'll be Tao meditations, spiritual meditations read. And then it'll end with Eva Carcass, who's the uh, uh, reason that we're doing this, because she was pushing me with this idea, too. She's going to read what she calls uh, Dragon's Blood from her Dragon's Blood new book. And she calls it very dark, and edgy, and maybe even explicit. <laughs> she says, ah. you don't mind, if, you don't okay. mind if there's a few words I say, uh, you know, that are just a little bit more, uh, you know, tough. She's talking about life experiences, like what happens when a 65-year-old person tries to date again what happens when that person has to keep going to doctors what happens when that person realizes that uh they can't do all the things that they used to do so she's positioning her uh, her writings in a very very appropriate way for people of our generation all right sounds like an interesting thing and so that would be you have something going on on saturday that's the saturday and then you have something for sunday that weekend also yeah, we would, we would like to follow it up on Sunday with a traditional open mic so that we do make space for, you know, a lot of other readers and writers. Who, people. Yeah, yeah, who, who want to try their work out on other poets and writers mm -hmm. and the general public. So the, I'm hoping more people sign up for that. And we're going to have two hours of open mic or an hour. And then we're going to do an hour of acoustic music, not to be confused with, say, what goes on with the wonderful open mic Mike Murphy does uh, down at the Mad Batter on Sunday nights. This is just going to be a uh, light acoustic guitar, something like that. Somebody mm -hmm. reading over their own music and uh, somebody who's not trying to be a performer, but they do write and mm -hmm. they do play. Sounds like fun. We're looking at October uh, 2nd, Saturday, and that right. starts at what time? People can arrive as early as they want, but the poets are actually going to take their position outside about five o'clock so that there's okay. only an hour for people to be wandering and listening to the poets. Each one isn't really going to take that long anyway. And the course that I have people hiking will certainly be doable for anybody. And it's certainly, uh, I would even say it's handicap accessible because they're all just lawns where they will have to go. But we should wear comfortable shoes. Yeah, no high heels. We don't allow high heels in the barn. <laughs> okay. Save the wood. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then Sunday, it starts what time? Sunday starts at 11 o'clock. And again, uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll have people check in. Uh, usually, I think on Saturday night, I'm going to be able to make an announcement to say, it's a go for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If I have enough signups, I want to make it a go. If not, we'll just let that be another time. Okay. If people want tickets, what do they do? The best thing to do is just to call me first, because we are uh, being critical about uh, the COVID situation. So you either need to be vaxxed and tell me that. Uh, and so I have that for surety. Or when you do come, present a 48-hour negative test for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that. Because yeah, that's important I, to see. And then we are going to wear masks inside. So when people call me at 609-827-6423, I'll answer and I'll, I'll just say, yeah. And then they'll be able to Venmo me or send a check or, or tell me they're going to pay when they get here. We're trying to make sure that we get most of the uh, accounting done before the event, because the last thing someone wants to do is stand at the door and try to change money and sell tickets and things like that, because it is just a private, it's almost like coming to a party, coming to mm -hmm. a friend's house. So I like to keep the, the finances uh, done ahead of time. All right, 609-827-6423. Right. And if people want to check out your website, where do they go? You can go to the, the spurlackgallery.com. S-P-E-R-L-A-K. Correct. And that will get you there. And go to events, and events will take you to the, the, the listing on, on words. Well, it sounds like a wonderful place, and I'll have to get out there. We're getting a lot of people uh, calling now. Uh, it was a little slow start there, but I think it's just because I was really anxious and wanting people to, like, buy tickets a month in advance. But I don't think people really operate that way. I just don't want to flood uh, two days before and not be able to fit the people because I'm promising people that it's not going to be a packed room. I want it to be a nicely spaced out. Well, you're taking pre uh, COVID precautions besides. So, yeah. yeah. I really want to thank WCFA uh, 101.5. Kid man, 
for all the support that they're doing for the arts. I, I listen to the show. Uh, usually I listen on Sundays. I, that's the day I get a chance to really kick back. But I really, the diversity of the DJs, the diversity of the music, uh, your constant reaching out, sharing our posts, sharing uh, events, uh, interviewing us regional artists and the things that are going on. You're really doing a great job as being our, our local radio station. So thank you. You're welcome.